Thank you for choosing the Water Fun People for your canoe trip today. We are going into historic Chester and Delaware counties, Pennsylvania. Please settle back and enjoy the scenery. Look around and be sure you have a life jacket for each person in your party. You should also have a map of the river for each canoe. We'll have the canoes and paddles for you when we reach our destination. An audio guide to your canoe adventure follows, so please take out your map and follow along. We are en route to the Lenape Access Point, the Brandywine Picnic Park for the four-hour adventure, our most popular trip. The middle of the stream is the deepest water, where you'll have the least chance of getting hung up on tree stumps or branches. The Wyeth Dam will appear about another hour downstream. This dam is also to be crossed on the left side. Stay out of the small stream, as this leads to a higher and more dangerous dam, and is private property. Brandywine tends to meander in this stretch, and keeping the boat in the middle of the river is a great way to enjoy the scenery and work on your tan at the same time. A large bridge painted blue marks the site of the second and final portage of your voyage. This is a U.S. Route 1 bridge. Again, portage this dam on the left side, taking the canoe out of the water upstream of the dam. Carry the canoe across the dam and place it back in the water downstream to continue your journey. Go by the Brandywine River Museum. Under an old railroad bridge, under a high concrete arch bridge, which we call twin bridges, and under a wooden bridge, Smith's Bridge. Your trip concludes at Thompson's Bridge, the bridge after the wooden bridge. Stopped on the left side of the river at the steps right before going under Thompson's Bridge. All trips end at Thompson's Bridge at 6 p.m. Do not go beyond this bridge. We hope you'll enjoy your trip with us today. Remember to always wear your life jacket securely fastened. Be sure to read the information on the back of the map you were given. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to speak to any staff member. Please stay tuned for part two of the video, which contains important safety information and paddling techniques. While you are at the shop, be sure to ask about our famous end of the season new and used canoe and kayak sale starting in the fall. If you are interested, leave your name and phone number on our canoe sales list. If you would like to learn more about the cultural and natural history of the Brandywine, then book one of our new guided interpretive canoe trips. Each trip is approximately two and a half hours in length and highlights some of the natural attractions found on the river. Times and days vary, please call the shop or check our brochure for details. Before departing on your trip, be sure to read the local rules and advisories printed on the back of your map, specifically those relating to high water flooding, lightning, rope swings, and waterways. Nature's waterways aren't the same as a water park activity, and boating in a canoe, kayak, or rowing craft involves a lot more than just hanging on for the ride. The river itself is a natural environment with possible downed trees, rocks, powerful current, uneven slippery bottoms, and shorelines. Floating or paddling on a natural flowing river is a risk activity, which can result in injury or even death if done carelessly or recklessly. The first step toward a safe, fun outing is to wear your life jacket. 
Your life jacket must fit snugly and be snapped, snug and secure to give the best protection. Even if you're an excellent swimmer, wearing your life jacket keeps your head above water so you can help others or help retrieve floating gear. Wear shoes to protect your feet. A large number of boating injuries happen to bare feet. Wear sunblock, even on cloudy days. If you wear glasses, a glass strap may keep them from getting lost. Drinks in non-breakable containers are important when you're spending time in the sun. And snacks or a lunch will help keep your energy up and help keep you warm on longer outings. While we're on the subject of how to get ready for an outing, let's consider some boaters' choice of beverage, alcohol. I haven't had enough. I think you need to drink a few more. Uh -oh. Half of all fatal accidents from small boats involve the use of alcohol. In many states, boating while under the influence of alcohol or drugs can result in fines and other penalties, including jail. Division of Watercraft, I need you to bring your canoe right over here to the bank. I'm going to need to talk to you for a few minutes. More importantly, even a small amount of alcohol can impair your judgment, especially when paddling in the hot sun. Save the party for someplace other than on the river. Remember, everything you take with you is at risk of getting wet or lost. Never leave lengths of rope loose in the boat. You could become tangled during a capsize. And by all means, never tie yourself or any person or pet to your craft. When you need to move around in the boat, remember to step in the center. Keep your weight low and hold on to both sides to steady yourself. Select a paddle that's the right size for you. As a general rule, your paddle should reach from the ground up to your chin. Grip a canoe paddle by folding the fingers of one hand over the top of the grip, while the other hand wraps around the shaft, thumb up. Your hand should be a little more than shoulder width apart. We ask that while you're on the river, you please do not splash with your paddles. You're going to find that they become very dangerous weapons. Once you start paddling, your hands get wet, you tend to lose your grip, they fly around, they hit the person in the back of you, they have a tendency to cause summer teeth. Some are here, some are there. Therefore, please do not splash with the paddles. The rear partner can steer the canoe by using the paddle as a rudder in between strokes. Slight adjustments of the paddle's angle will change direction of the canoe. On some rivers, you may run aground in places where the water is too shallow. If you can't get unstuck using paddle strokes, carefully step to the upstream side of your boat and walk it to deeper water. Capsizing a small boat is no cause for panic. Remember to hang on to your paddle to ease equipment recovery. To empty a swamped boat, roll it as you lift it out of the water. When paddling in a current, you may bump up against a submerged rock or a log. Leaning the boat toward the obstruction counterbalances the force of the current traveling under your boat, which forces it to roll upstream. If you capsize in moving current, get to the upstream side of the boat. Staying upstream of your boat keeps you from getting trapped between it and any obstacles. To swim in current, keep your feet floating at the surface and downstream of you to fend off rocks. Swim to knee-deep water before putting your feet down. The faster and more challenging the water, the higher level of paddling skill needed. Don't assume your skills are a good match for a river just because you see others paddling it. Slapping the blade down onto the water, sticking your hips back against the force of the paddle blade and bringing your boat upright toward the gunnel's level. Take a river boating course from the American Canoe Association, Red Cross chapter, local paddling club or outfitter if you want to develop the skills needed for paddling in moving current. You may not easily recognize it if the river downstream of you passes over the top of a dam. Dams and natural ledges that drop only a couple of feet can develop these powerful currents below them which can trap objects, including boats and people. Carry your canoe around these hazards and launch a safe distance downstream. Weather can change dramatically throughout the course of an outing. Know the weather forecast. Be prepared for rain or wind. Other points to keep in mind, if swimming, a head-first dive can result in severe and permanent spinal injury. Take out any trash that you bring with you. Leave all wildlife you see alone. 
be considerate of others on and off the water. That means not trespassing on private land and showing respect to those who are looking for peace and quiet. And please, give anglers plenty of room so you don't interfere with their sport. There's lots to learn about paddling small boats, but the tips we've covered will help your outing be enjoyable and safe. If you have any questions or want additional information, ask your outfitter.